and were discussing uh, the mentioning of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the, the Bible, in particular in the chapter called Songs of Solomon in 516. And we see here, this is the Hebrew of this chapter, the original Hebrew. And uh, you can see the transliteration, uh, that there is a word that looks uh, very familiar. And uh, we'll, we're going to investigate what this word means in this chapter. And there it is, the word in uh, Hebrew as well. Now, King James Version is translated as, His mouth is most sweet, yea, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. But let's look a little deeper into this verse, and then we'll see the word uh, here in Hebrew. And this is the transliteration of the word uh, in Hebrew. This is what the word would sound like in English and the translation of altogether lovely. This is the royal plural of the word im, so dim, and this is the, uh, the plurality that's been added to this word to show uh, a plurality of respect. Uh, and you can see also in Genesis 1.1, in the King James Version, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. This is the Hebrew of the original, uh, of the uh, Genesis 1.1. This is the modern Hebrew. And you could see God is right there in Hebrew. And we can also see the plurality of respect because this is a word, Elahim, and uh, meaning that it's a plurality of respect, but not a plural word itself. So it's a singular word, but given the plurality of respect, meaning it's something special, a special word. So we also see the plurality of respect given to the word for God in Genesis 1.1. The Hebrew tr transliteration, there is the word translator, transliterated for, for God, Elohim or Elohim in Hebrew. That again is the symbol there, the letter in Hebrew for given the plurality of, of respect. It's a masculine plural, and you could see both of them right there. In reference to a singular entity, it denotes highness or respect. Now, other people have said, well, this word is mentioned in the Bible and other places. So let's take a look. This is 1 Kings 26. We could see the same word, but we don't see the plur plurality of respect given uh, to that word. So that would indicate that it's not really a proper name. Uh, so they've translated that word for to be pleasant. But in the, uh, the uh, Songs of Solomon, in that chapter 5, 16, you could see there's something special about the word because it's giving a higher uh, respect. There's something, maybe perhaps it's a unique name for an individual. Again, this is 2 Chronicles 36, 19. No plurality of respect in, in that uh, word there. So it's been translated as goodly. Ezekiel 24, 16. Again, uh, the same word, but no uh, plurality of respect given to that word. It's been translated as desire. And again, uh, we see this word with no plurality of respect. It's been translated again f to be the word desire in English. We see Ezekiel 24, 25, the same thing. Also in Hosea 5, 6, we see the same. Isaiah 64, 11, as well as Lamentations 1, 10. And 111, as well as 24. But in the Songs of Solomon, we see something different. It's given a same plurality of respect that, again, we find in Genesis 1 1 for the word of God, Elohim. So, what can be this word? It's been translated as altogether lovely in English, but it seems to be that this word would indicate that. Perhaps it's a, a unique individual's name. It's given a certain uh, sign of respect in the Hebrew language. So again, we have the, uh, the plurality of respect. Now the translation being altogether lovely in English. 
What if this is an actual name of an individual? Because it's, it's indicating that there is some form of reverence given to this particular name in this particular uh, verse in, in the Bible when you look deep into it in the original Hebrew. We, of course, do not call Pierre Trudeau, Peter Trudeau, in English-speaking Canada, so we don't translate individuals' names. We leave them. So let's look at this. His mouth is most sweet. Yea, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved and this is my friend. Now, the uh, biblical commentary on the Old Testament says regarding this verse, the palate is frequently named as the organ of speech. Now, there is a fragrance of his breath came into consideration. His breath both in itself and is serving for the formation of articulate words. But the naming of the palate can point to nothing else than his words. With this description comes to a conclusion for, from the speech, the most distinct and immediate expression of the personality, advance is made finally to the praise of the person. The plurialiant designate what they mention in richest fullness, his palate, i.e. that which he speaks and the manner in which he speaks it is true sweetness and his whole being true loveliness. So this is the, the Bible commentary on this from the, the Christian sources is saying that this is referring to his palate, therefore the formation of articulate words. And that which he speaks and the manner in which he speaks it is true sweetness. Of course, Rasulullah, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. What was he noted for? The biggest gift that he brought was the gift of the Holy Quran from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, from the angel to the angel Jibreel, alayhi salam, to the, the lips to the palate, to the spoken word of, of Prophet Muhammad, who could neither read nor write. And the first verse in the Holy Quran was actually, Recite in the name of thy Lord and cherisher, who created, created man out of a mere clot of congealed blood. This is the first revelation given to Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in mentioning his, his palate, his 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 words, because this is what the Holy Quran is, is a recitation. I find this quite interesting, actually, when analyzing this verse, Songs of Solomon. This is the word, of course. Now, when you put this word into Google, and you do a search, you'll find the Hebrew pages come up. And when you actually go to translate this page, this page, the first page that comes up when you put this Hebrew word in, is this page here. When you press a translation, <coughs> you will see Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, will come up. Google will bring up Muhammad when you put that Hebrew word into the search page. That is, that is indicated in Songs of Solomon 5.16. Saying, he is the last of the prophets. And the Arabic meaning glorious or magnificent. And we, 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 we know in Arabic the name Muhammad means the one who is praised. This is the Google translation result of this Hebrew word found in Songs of Solomon, which is given the royal plural. And this is the Arabic for Muhammad. Notice the similarities. Again, his mouth is most sweet, yea, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. His, most, his mouth is most sweet, his palate is most sweet. His palate, meaning the formation of articulate words, that which he speaks and the manner in which he speaks it is true sweetness. We got that from the Christian uh, evaluation of that, uh, that verse itself from Christian sources. And this is my friend, Raya, and that is the word in, in Hebrew, underlined, an associate, 